Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at these 24 volt 100 amp hour batteries from BigBattery.com again. Now if you remember I reviewed these about four weeks or five weeks ago and I showed you what was inside. And I found that after I applied a 100 amp load to this battery, this circuit breaker got so hot that it actually tripped the BMS to shut it off. And the temperature of this breaker on the inside part measured 150 degrees Celsius before it flipped off. Now I believe that has something to do with this being a 63 amp breaker and they basically just paralleled both of these poles to form a 126 amp breaker. Uh, I'm told by a few people that that's acceptable to do. I don't think it is in my opinion. So I picked up this 125 amp DC rated Tom ZN breaker and today we're going to replace this double pole breaker with this single pole breaker and see if this makes any difference with the amount of heat produced. This breaker is rated for 250 volts DC and it is a non-polarized breaker. Now I did uh, reach out to Big Battery as well and explain this problem to them and they also said that this was an okay way of wiring this but they did say they would take a look pending the results of this particular test. So this is just a standard DIN breaker and they put this custom piece of metal strapping around the back of it to hold it into the front of the case so this new breaker will fit the same way. It's the same type of DIN rail, and it's also the same thickness. So it's very important to keep in mind while working on this that all these terminals are live in here, even though the breaker is shut off. And I want to start by removing this BMS and get that out of the way. And to do that, there are two Phillips screws on each side of the enclosure. Now I want to remove this balance lead as well. And I did turn the circuit breaker on because I want to see how long it takes after I move this balance lead for this to shut off into safety mode. Go ahead and pull the connector off. Oh, there we go. That was just what five or ten seconds. Not even, not even that. So, all right. So I'm just going to carefully pick this up. And there's not a lot of room to work in here. I'm gonna have to cut some of these zip ties. gives me enough room to at least get it out of the side here. So now I can remove this adhesive insulation thing. And then I also need to pull out this 175 amp Anderson connector. And that is held on by two screws in the front. There is one here and there's one underneath this warranty sticker thing. We now have a little bit more room to move our BMS out of the way, which safely keeps all the negative controlled components away from the positive side. So now we need to remove the strap that's holding in this breaker. And to do that, there are two more Phillips screws on the front, just like the Anderson connector. So we can slide the breaker out the back. You can see this little bracket they built for it. It's actually a fairly neat idea. And it is strapped in there. So we're just going to leave this on for the moment and disconnect these positive leads. All right, so that is a 14 millimeter socket to get those bolts off. And I will say that they were not on there tight at all. So maybe it was just a case of these bolts not getting tightened down enough. As you can see, there's only one flat washer and there are no lock washers. So uh, when I removed this bolt, I didn't even have to use a wrench on the other end. I just twisted loosely with the ratchet on the one side and it popped right off. So I'm not sure at this point if that was the issue or not. Perhaps once we finish testing this one unit with the new breaker, I'll remove the top from the other unit and test the other one as well with these stock breakers and see what happens. But yeah, this bolt should definitely have a lock washer on, especially considering this metal is going to be constantly heating and cooling throughout the life of this battery. So on this breaker, they also have the positive for the voltage display coming out of here. So, and even that screw doesn't feel very tight. I hardly even moved that and the screw came out. Let me see here. Look at that. I didn't even touch this screw over here and this thing just fell out in my hand. This thing isn't even tightened down. And there's a little bit of tightness on that side, but yeah. So there we go. This one was tightened down a little better, but not as tight as I would have tightened it. But this side where the heat was coming from was definitely loose, both on the breaker and the nut that went on that copper plate. So. Yeah, that may have been the problem here. So like I said, we're going to put the new breaker in anyway and retest this enclosure. And then I'm also going to take the lid off the second battery and test that one as well. Now to get this little strap thing off here, you got to pull up on both of these two tabs here to release it. So I'll just try to do one at a time. There we go. And we can see the thickness of the new one is slightly smaller since it's only a single pole. But the profile from the side 
you know, the DIN rail is exactly the same, and it's exactly the same height. These are standard measurements pretty much here. We'll just clip this new breaker on the same holder. Now, in order to get the wire into here, I'm unfortunately going to have to cut off both of these ring terminals. I don't want to try anything funny like they did here with this thing, really, because, you know, this isn't really designed to accept a solid piece of copper. This is designed for stranded wire. We'll say this is kind of painful having to do this because these are some nicely crimped, you know, lugs here, but, uh... All right, so I got about a half an inch of insulation stripped off of each lead here. Now, you're not really supposed to put two wires into one clamp like this unless the clamp says you can, but, uh... So there's more than enough room for them to fit. Tighten it down. Just verify I got a nice tight clamp. Both leads are in there and they are not coming back out. I'm gonna give it one more tighten here. It's good. So next I need to do the same with the connection coming off of the back of this Anderson plug. And there's not a lot of lead to work with here, so I need to be careful not to cut too much of this wire off. But on this side, I also need to make sure that the lead from the voltage display goes in as well. All right, so we're gonna put the breaker back in the original slot. I also need to return the Anderson plug. Here now I just need to put the BMS back in, keeping in mind not to lose this little balance lead connector down there. So, it's back in, and there are two screws on each side again, same as before. All right, so with that completed, we can now plug our balance lead back in, which should re-engage the BMS. All right, so now we should be able to turn this breaker back on. And we're back at system voltage of 23.1 volts. All right, guys, so I got a little test set up here. I have my 24 volt, 100 amp hour battery. The power is coming out of the battery. The positive is going directly into this MPP solar uh, PIP inverter. The negative is coming out and going into this shunt here. We're gonna use this to measure the amount of amps and the amount of amp hours uh, drawn from this battery. And then it goes off into the inverter as well. In case you're wondering what's going on with this, you know, thick piece of wire and whatnot here, um, the bolts on this shunt are very large and I didn't want to cut off these lugs and splice on new lugs just to have a bigger bolt hole. Um, so I just put this on as a little adapter piece from the smaller lug to the bigger lug. And on the inverter I also have an AC power cord because we're going to use this inverter to charge up this battery prior to the test. So to get started, I'm going to turn on my battery. And we are at 23.2 volts. And looking at the Victron display, we're seeing 23.29 volts. The uh, camera's having a difficult time picking this display up for some reason. And now that this inverter has completed starting up, you can see we are idling at 2.18 amps. Now it's important to note that I did set this inverter to the charge parameters as specified in the battery. You cannot simply plug this battery into this inverter and it work out of the box. Um, this is pre-configured for lead acid. So you need to make sure you align your parameters to your specifications of your battery. And now the AC charger has engaged and you can see it ramping up slowly. It is configured to a maximum of 40 amps. So you can hear the fans ramping up as well as the charger continues to ramp up. Uh, it seems to be hanging around 36.7 even though it is set for 40. So we're just going to leave it go at that. And it's probably going to take a little while for this to charge up since it's pretty much depleted. And while it's charging, I'm going to figure out what to use as a load for this. All right, so the charge cycle is pretty much complete. We're at 29.2 volts. Now this battery does specify a charge voltage of 29.4. However, this inverter would not allow me to go past 29.2. On the Victron display, it is still charging at 0.75 amps. So it's pretty much just trickle charging at this point. It is done in my opinion. All right, so for the discharge portion of this test, I have this outlet box connected to my inverter with 10 gauge wire and I have two standard 15 amp outlets here. Obviously you would normally want circuit breakers and overcurrent protection. However, this is a highly supervised test. I'm sitting here watching this, making sure nothing goes wrong. So if you're doing something similar, make sure you have the proper breakers in place. Uh, for my load, I just have two standard uh, electric space heaters. They're 1500 watts a piece. This inverter is only good for 2400 watts. So I'm hoping that I can put one space heater on high and one space heater on low. Um, that should give me close to around the 100 amp load that I had from the other test. Now in previous tests, it took about 15 minutes for the breaker to overheat. 
So I'm going to run this for about 15 minutes and come back and check it with a thermal camera. So here goes the first space heater. All right, and here goes the second space heater on low. All right, so that's slightly less amps than before. I don't know that I want to push it and put both on high. I guess we can give it a try and see what happens. Yep, too much. All right. All right, so I went and grabbed two uh, incandescent lamps. I believe they're both 60 watts and plugged those in as well, which got me pretty close to the original test of the clothes dryer. So I'm going to be back in approximately 15 minutes and we'll see what's going on. All right, it's been exactly 15 minutes since I started this test and you can see we are still pulling 96 amps. The current is slowly increasing as the voltage in the battery decreases. The battery is currently sitting at 25.9 volts. Now just generally feeling inside the uh, enclosure here, the breaker does feel rather warm. Uh, I can't say for certain if it feels hotter than it did before. All right, we are now 18 minutes into the test because I was talking for quite a bit and this is the point at which the thing shut off last time. So I see a hot point down there sitting around 77 degrees Celsius and that is the 6 gauge wire that comes off of the breaker. Remember 100 amps on 6 gauge wire is kind of pushing it but that's still within the 200 degrees Celsius rating of the insulation. And the input side which is a pair of number 8's I believe is sitting around the same temperature. And this is the area of the breaker that hit 150 Celsius before, currently sitting at 67 to 68 Celsius, I think was the hottest I've seen. So that is definitely a substantial improvement. That, that's more than half the temperature of before. I see some hot points in there around 65 to 66. The heat sink for the most part is fairly cool. All right, so as the voltage slowly drops, the current continues to increase. We're now at 98.2 amps. And the limit of this thing is 100 amps, so I'm going to shut off one of the lamps just to make sure this stays below 100 amps. I don't want to push it too much. So I'm going to continue to let this run out, wait until the battery is fully discharged, and then we'll see how many amp hours we've consumed. We're getting close. We're at 21.9 volts on the display here, and this battery will shut off at 21.0 volts. It sure drops fast once you get into the final stretch. Oh, there we go. It shut off at 21.2 volts. And that was actually the inverter that shut off, not the battery itself. Looking at the Victron software over here, we have consumed 83.0 amp hours. Now, as I said in my previous video, uh, this is a 100 amp hour battery. And as you can see, we only consumed 83 amp hours. However, it's important to note that we tested this battery at nearly a 0.9 uh, C rating the entire way through. And the manufacturer standard for testing batteries is typically around 0.2 C. So once again, I have no doubts whatsoever that we would hit this 100 amp hour capacity if we had been testing at the proper 0.2C. So as we saw, replacing this double pole breaker with a single pole 125 amp breaker significantly reduced the temperature of the breaker itself by more than half the prior temperature. It was testing around 150 degrees Celsius before after only 15 minutes of use. And even after a half an hour use, this was still around 75 to 76 degrees Celsius. Now that is still pretty warm, but again, you're running it at uh, near 100% capacity. That begs the question of whether or not the issue was caused by the original breaker or if it was caused by those bolts being loose on this breaker. So to answer that question, I'm gonna take the second battery I have and do the same test on it with the original breaker and we're going to see if it reaches the same temperatures and if it does we will take the breaker out tighten the bolts and then do it again and see if that changes all right guys so i've got the second battery charged up that i was going to test and i was going to shut it off and i noticed that this circuit breaker like gets stuck halfway so when i went to shut it off it sat in this position and did not fully disengage and you can see this battery continues to operate so i don't know if it were to flip if that would flip off or if it would get stuck like that. And this is supposed to be a safety device. So look, I flipped it. There it goes. Now it shuts off, but. All right, so we are starting the test now at 9.15 AM. All right, so I'll be back in about 15 minutes and we'll take a look at the breaker and see how hot it is. All right, guys, I am now 15 minutes into this test and this breaker does not feel very warm at all. I mean, it feels normal warm. It doesn't feel excessive warm like before. 
So let's check it with a thermal camera. I see a hot part down there. It's around 73, 74 where that ring terminal is. And it's around 70 Celsius as well where the copper bar enters the breaker. But the area that was getting exceedingly hot over here is still sitting around 60 Celsius. So that's pretty good. I think it's safe to say the terminals were loose on the other breaker. So yeah, after retesting the second battery with the original breaker, we did not see the same heat as we saw on the first unit. So I do believe the problem was caused by loose bolts on the original circuit breaker. And I think I probably wasted quite a bit of my time replacing it with this single pole breaker. I was talking to Will Prouse a little bit and he said that this is a pretty good decent quality breaker based on the spec sheet he found. Um, I've never heard of it personally and I don't really see any safety certifications on it. But regardless of which breaker is used, there still needs to be a lock washer on this bolt. I do think that was part of the problem in addition to not having it tightened down properly. So yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, I do still love these batteries themselves. It's just this breaker, I can't, I don't know what it is. I'm just not sold on this double pole uh, design of this breaker here. So yeah, any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already. Thank you.